To start our conference, I am pleased and honored to introduce to you our Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Etienne Schneider, Minister of the Economy, Minister of Defense, and Minister of Interior Security. As a gay person, Mrs. Schneider is also co-founder of Rosa Lützebüch, and he supports initiatives that lead to inclusion, whatever the difference between people is. Mrs. Schneider, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, uh, equality uh, is a fundamental right and, and a common value, and uh, it is not subject to any negotiations uh, or restrictions. One year ago, uh, Luxembourg has made a big step towards uh, equality by finally uh, adopting and legalizing same-sex uh, marriage. And as you said, one might think that uh, in a country where the Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister are both openly uh, gay, uh, homosexuality is not longer an issue. But nevertheless, homophobia and discrimination towards LGBTI people still exist, both uh, inside and outside the workplace. While uh, progress has uh, been made, uh, many lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender people still worry that uh, revealing their sexuality at work will have negative consequences. A surprisingly large number of people hide aspects of their identity at work. Studies have proven that more than 50% of homosexual uh, people choose not to disclose their sexual orientation at work. One third of these employees struggle to be themselves at work because they believe conformity is critical to their long-term career advancement. So these people change aspect of their behavior or their appearance in order to fit in at work. But hiding is a progressive habit. And once you start hiding, it becomes harder and harder to step forward and speak out. People become paralyzed by the fear of not being accepted. I believe that lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people should be able to fully participate in Luxembourg's social and professional life, free from discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. Ladies and gentlemen, the diversity of our society should be reflected in the workplace. This is relevant to Luxembourg. We are an open, dynamic and a welcoming country and a hub for many international talents. Today, we are therefore uh, sharing thoughts on this topic and uh, uh, we are here in order to ask ourselves what challenges do LGBTI people face in the workplace? How can businesses support their LGBTI workforce? What needs to change within businesses to create an inclusive environment? And last but not least, which companies are getting it right. Ladies and gentlemen, I was not uh, openly gay when I started my studies in Brussels and uh, London, and even after I finished them, I didn't want to disclose my homosexuality. Why? First of all, uh, I did not have a boyfriend at that time, so I thought it was not that urgent uh, <laughs> to do my coming out. And second, uh, I was a member of the local council in my hometown, and I thought it might not be that, uh, such a good idea uh, to tell people over there. But then, all of a sudden, everything changed as I uh, met somebody I wanted to be with and share my life with. So I thought that I had uh, no other possibilities, no other choice anymore uh, to do my coming out. I told myself, anyway, uh, people will get to know once you live together with this man in this small town and being a local councillor. So I decided first to tell my family, then my closest friends, and later on my colleagues at work. And uh, all went surprisingly well until the upcoming local elections, where several candidates of the local CSV used my sexual orientation to abase me. And I must tell you that this was quite a shocking experience uh, to me. But uh, when I 
uh, when I nearly doubled my result at the election, I became increasingly uh, confident while seeing that people did not approve this spiteful abasement uh, campaign. So when I became a minister for the first time in February 2012, I saw only two personal matters that risked to become sensitive to me. First of all, my enthusiasm as a socialist for classic cars, especially for my Rolls-Royce uh, convertible. And uh, second, my sexual orientation, which uh, was unknown on a national level, I, I, as I wasn't uh, very much known uh, at that time. And that's why, again, I, I put all my cards on the table at the very beginning of my national political mandate. And I tell you what, nobody was really interested into, in my homosexuality, but many were discussing about my Rolls Royce, and they still do. <laughs> so I could, uh, I could conclude now in telling you that you need a Rolls Royce if you want to divert the public discussion <laughs> from your sexual orientation towards cars, but uh, I think that's not the best, neither the cheapest solution. So um, everything I want uh, to tell you, the message I want to give you is, that you should not hide and uh, don't care about the ones who don't accept uh, your difference. They are not worth it and you have only one life and you should try uh, to make the best out of it. So uh, distinguished guests, I'm, I would like to thank the Diversity Charter Lützburg and BGL BNP Paribas for organizing today's conference. I would uh, also like to thank the guest speakers who kindly agreed to participate and who will fuel uh, the discussions by sharing their experiences and their thoughts. I wish you all an interesting conference and I hope it will bring you inspiration, new ideas and uh, fruitful exchanges. So thank you very much.